Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the City Council meeting. It's April 16th, 2018. We'll start this meeting with a roll call and determination of quorum. Scott? Here. Drew? Here. Nordstrom? Here. Modric? Here. Solomon? Lewis, Here. Armstrong, Here. Laurenti, Here. Drury, Here. Roberts. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. And now uh, we'll have an invocation by Pastor Steve Selfridge and followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that in the beginning you created the heavens and the earth, and part of that earth you created was this place called the Black Hills. Thank you for the community in which we reside and for the beauty of this area. Thank you for all that will be discussed here tonight. We do pray that you be with the wisdom and the discernment of this council as they debate and look toward helping our community. Thank you for the veteran who will be honored tonight. Thank you for North Middle School and the other schools, but specifically North Middle School and the award they'll be receiving tonight. And Lord, I just uh, thank you for each of those who sit in front of us week in and week out and uh, help lead our city. I pray that you would put, put your hand of protection around them and guard their minds and their thoughts. And I pray specifically also for um, each family that's represented within this room. There are concerns that are greater than just words on a page. And so Lord, I pray that you would provide your healing touch and your powerful hand of miracles to be displayed. So Lord, I pray that you'd go before all the decisions that are made this evening and your name would be praised in everything we do and say, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Now we will adopt the agenda. At this time, the council may adopt the agenda as written, or they may make some alterations to, to it. Second. We have a motion to adopt by Solomon and a second by Lewis. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Now I will step down front for a couple of uh, recognitions. Is Pascal Bedard here? In partnership with the Veterans Coordination Commission, we are pleased to present the April 2018 Veteran of the Month recognition to Pascal Bedard. Having humble beginnings in the family dairy and wood business and aspiring to make something greater of his life, uh, Mr. Bedard enlisted in the United States Air Force in 1981. This began a 26-year enlistment with the Air Force. Mr. Bedard had a long and prosperous military career serving in overseas missions in the Republic of South Korea, the Philippines, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and Diego Garcia. He retired in 2007 as Chief Master Sergeant, in other words, in the top 1% of the enlisted personnel after 26 years in the Air Force. He is known for his impactful last line of, how can I serve you? At his last assignment, one of his duties was Squadron Chief of the 28th Maintenance Operations Squadron at Ellsworth Air Force Base. It is reported that his unit's morale was the highest Air Force wide for a unit of this size. One memorable moment of his career was being selected as one of two aircraft maintenance individuals to participate in the work of an investigation board looking into an airplane crash in the mountains of Vermont 
in 1988. <clears throat> Fortunately, the, the uh, air crew ejected safely, traveling through freezing rain uh, to St. Johnsbury. The crew spent their days dredging through deep snow, identifying aircraft parts well into the evening hours. The hole left in the ground by the airplane was deep and wide and burned for several days. Another memorable moment was the morning of September 11, 2001, while stationed at Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri, uh, in an active nuclear operational readiness inspection and learning our country was under attack. The base passed the inspection and immediately began military preparations for response into the attacks. Uh, Mr. Bernard recalls one aircraft that returned to Whiteman after a 44-hour mission having used one million gallons of jet fuel. Mr. Bernard regularly lends his service to the Rapid City uh, Vet Center and currently participates in a work-study program. Dedicated to serving his fellow veterans, he is known to go above and beyond assisting individuals with accessing transportation and benefits and in his detailed record keeping. Having a strong sense of pride in his work and day-to-day -day activities, Mr. Bedard diligently sees to the comfort of not only his fellow veterans, but also their families. He is currently a senior at Black Hill State University, working towards his Bachelor of Science in Human Services. Pascal met his wife, Denise, while stationed at Pattsburgh Air Force Base, New York. He was a crew chief, and she was a sheet metal technician. They currently reside in the Rapid City area and have four grown children, one daughter and three sons. Having served his country with honor, courage, and commitment, Mr. Pascal Bedard is a true patriot of the United States Air Force and lives out the motto, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. He is most deserving of this honor and we would like to extend our gratitude. Now I have an executive proclamation to read on behalf of National Volunteer Week. Uh, is there anyone here representing uh, the volunteers that would like to come forward? Okay, an executive proclamation. Whereas every community member can affect positive change with any volunteer action, no matter how big or small. And in Rapid City, South Dakota, uh, or in South Dakota, I'm sorry, 240,933 people volunteer annually, making us fourth in the country for volunteerism. The value of these volunteer hours equals $630 million. And whereas volunteers can connect with local community service opportunities through hundreds of community service organizations like volunteer centers. And whereas millions of volunteers working in their communities utilize their time and talent daily to make a real difference in the lives of children, adults, and the elderly. And whereas during this week, all over the nation, uh, service projects will be performed and volunteers recognized for their commitment to service. And whereas the giving of one's self and service to another empowers the giver and the recipient. Whereas experience teaches us that government by itself cannot solve all of our nation's social problems. And whereas our country's volunteer force, which is 62.6 million people uh, 
who give 7.8 billion hours uh, is a great treasure. Now therefore, I, Steve Allender, Mayor of Rapid City, do hereby proclaim April 15th through April 21st as National Volunteer Week in Rapid City, and I urge all citizens of any age to get involved and volunteer in the community. Audrey Nordine, Volunteer Connections Coordinator with Helpline Center. I want to recognize the folks that are here with us tonight, both uh, volunteers and volunteer managers, um, to bring our community together. Um, both thanks to the volunteer managers for giving of their time, putting together these service projects, and um, living the mission of a lot of the all of the nonprofits that we have in this area, as well as our um, outstanding volunteers, um, to be recognized during this week. Thank you. Now, are there uh, representatives from the Sustainability Committee here, please? <coughs> and can we have the uh, representatives from North Middle School come forward, too? All right, it's all yours. Just introduce yourself. My name is Jason Phillips. I'm representing the Sustainability Committee, we're a volunteer-based committee, and we present awards out to members of the community that are um, doing sustainable practices and designs for to meet social, environmental, and economic needs. Um, I'm just going to read the press release because there's a lot of good information in here. Um, North Middle School in Rapid City, South Dakota has been selected as the recipient for the April 2018 Rapid City Sustainability Award. Sustainability awards are presented by the City of Rapid City's Standing Committee on Sustainability for projects that contribute to the societal, environmental, and economic viability of Rapid City. The former courtyard space at North Middle School was in a, a severe state of despair and due to problems with poor drainage, causing damage to the building itself and also to the foundation. In order to prevent further damage and properly handle stormwater runoff, the Rapid City School District chose to remodel the courtyard with a design that would not only address the drainage issues, but also achieve other objectives that would benefit the students, staff, school building, and environment, as well as save the Rapid City area schools money in the long term. This includes creating an easy, uh, easier to maintain space, maximizing the use of the courtyard space, improving occupant health and safety by eliminating mold issues and trip hazards, saving the existing mature trees located in the courtyard, improving accessibility, and enhancing the students' learning at the school. The courtyard improvements were the first, in the first phase of the project and were conducted in the summer of 2016. The second phase of the project involves similar improvements to the exterior of the school building and was completed in the summer of 2017. Rapid City Area Schools Facility Service Manager, Manager Kumar Valaswamy oversaw implementation of this project and his design associates Renner um, Engineering and Stanley Landscape Architects. Most notably, the improvements conducted have made it so the interior courtyard and the exterior of North Middle School now exceed requirements for stormwater runoff by capturing all surface moisture and using best management practices for stormwater management. The improvements also achieve many of the other Rapid City Area Schools objectives by saving several of the existing mature trees, extending the useful life of the school building by repairing and preventing further water damage, redu reducing maintenance costs by using concrete and artificial turf in construction, using local rocks to create an outdoor classroom slash amphitheater, making this space accessible for all and creating space for five to nine classes to be able to have a learning outdoor laboratory all at the same time. 
In addition, the North Middle School Courtyard and Exterior Drainage Improvements projects achieve many sustainable practices, including providing access to green outdoor space for students, promoting local quality of life for students, improving indoor air quality in the school building, and using local resources for construction. Fostering community identity by giving the students and space to, to, be a proud of, to be proud of improving accessibility and public safety. Minimizing stormwater runoff and preventing water quality degradation. Saving money in terms of long-term maintenance costs and teaching, promoting sustainable stewardship to future generations. So we proudly would like to present this award to Kumar and his design team. I just want to say a couple of words. Um, I know time is essential here. I'm going to make, it this, make this quick. And thanks, everyone, for selecting our project as uh, the sustainable project in Rapid City and uh, the council members for recognizing us. And uh, this, is, this is a great project. And from the school district standpoint and North Middle School standpoint, we are very proud of this project. And uh, we received multiple awards last year. Um, it's very challenging uh, with given two and a half month time frame to get this whole thing done. It costed the district two uh, two and a half million dollars to get this project done. By the end of the day, we were able to save uh, thirty-five million dollars by not building a brand new middle school. Um, so we certainly sustained all that, and we picked materials uh, as Jason uh, read out, and uh, uh, very maintenance-friendly and uh, sustainable for the, for the um, uh, 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 <coughs> sustainable material. So, uh, thanks again. Yep. We'll have one more uh, recognition uh, for our very own Councilwoman Darla Drew, who turned 68 today. No, <laughs> that's not true. That's not far from the That's not true. <laughs> uh, Darla Drew uh, has a long history being a part of Dee Dee and the Pharaohs. In fact, she's Dee Dee, Darla <laughs> Drew. Uh, and um, in 2011, she was inducted into the uh, South Dakota uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for her work in Dee Dee and the Pharaohs. And just recently was inducted again a second time uh, for her work in business relative to rock and roll where she was a booking agent for 25 years. And so now she is uh, perhaps the only woman uh, to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. So thank you, Darla Drew. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Just two things. Rock on. Okay, here we are. Um, we have no uh, speaker requests for general public comment. 
Uh, so we'll go to non-public hearing items three through 36. There are no speaker request forms for the public comment items, which are three through 27. So we'll move to the consent calendar items three through 27. Uh, this is a time where the council can approve all of these items with one vote or pull certain items off for individual discussion. We'll go to Amanda Scott. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to pull item number 13 in order to abstain, please. Okay, Becky Drury. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to pull 14, 15, and 16, please. Okay, are there any others? If not, can we have a motion to approve the consent with the exception of 13, 14, 15, and 16? Move to adopt. Move to uh, approve by Solomon, second by Scott. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. We'll go to item 13, which is to approve the extension of contract awarded May 2017 to Pete Lean and Sons for ready mixed concrete for the next year for use by various city departments. Motion to approve by Drew and a second by Nordstrom. Uh, we'll go to Becky Drury. Thank you, Mayor. May I ask Dale Tech a question, please? Thank you. Why don't you just uh, ask all your questions on your items because I think it's the same question, Mike, correct? I was going to say okay. that. Go ahead, please. But thanks for helping me. Mr. Tech, I just have a question on this grouping of items because they all say approve extension of contract, approve extension of contract. Is there a reason we're doing that instead of going out to bid? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, uh, excellent question. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The prices of commodities go up every year. Um, we have bid these in the past, um, previous year. It's to the city's benefit to get last year's prices this year. If we were to go out to bid, I could almost guarantee you that the price would be higher. Okay, so that's, so we're really saving the money for the city by extending those contracts instead of rebidding. That's correct. Okay, and that was just my question on those items. Thank you. Okay, any objection to putting items 14 through 16 back on as one vote? If not, uh, we have a motion by Solomon to do that. Second. Second by Lewis. Um, all in favor of approval of items 14, 15, and 16. 13. We're still here. Oh, are we? Yep. Yes, sorry, oh, Mayor. Right. I do have to abstain on that one. Okay. 13 through 16. Is that okay with the motion maker? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abstain you. Let's take, a step Let's take a vote on item 13. Thank we you. have an, a, a motion and a, and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Whew. Sorry about that. And then Amanda Scott wants to abstain from item 13, so that'll be duly noted. Now items 14 through 16. May I have a motion to approve all of these? Okay, motion to approve by Solomon, second by Scott. All in favor of approving these three items say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. And now we're on to non-consent items, items 28 through 36, and we'll open public comment on those items. Have a few speaker requests on item 32, and we'll start with uh, Fred and Sherry Thurston. How's that? All right, I'm kind of new at this. Sherry Thurston, uh, I live in Rapid City. Um, I'm also on the sustainability committee, but um, anyways, the idea of putting uh, any more, you know, advertising and stuff out in this area, um, I guess I'd just like to give you guys a chance to think about the fragile nature of the fact that we still have a really quaint town that tourists want to come to and there could reach a tipping point and just to be careful because once we hit that I think we've lost something and I'm not sure we can get it back so um, anyways I also want to follow up on um, our meeting a couple weeks ago where we talked about billboards and um, Remind you again um, that in uh, 2011, we had a vote where 
of the, the voting population voted against more billboards, voted against bigger billboards, uh, voted against digital billboards. And what you're talking about today is only a, a, another size billboard. You're talking about 70 plus billboards that are going to go around on city property. It's not even on um, the owner of the billboard's property, it's on city property that you're putting these. I understand the, the financial advantage in, in doing this, but please uh, reconsider. We don't need more billboards that we have to sit on that mess up our, our beautiful downtown, and there aren't many downtown, but around our city. Um, we just don't need them. You know, we don't need that little bit of money. Um, there are other ways of, of achieving um, that, those financial goals uh, without selling our souls. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Mike Kwasney on the same item. Thank you, Mayor, Council. My name is Mike Kwasney. I reside in Rapid City, 1512 Lark. You know, in our invocation, we, he commented about the beauty of the Black Hills, and I think it's our job to protect that beauty as we go forward. It's great any time we're looking at ways to save the city money. I think that's awesome. I really, really can appreciate what you're trying to do. Um, penny saved is a penny earned. Okay. Uh, some concerns that I have. Are our sign codes up to date to take care of this? Do we know what we're going to do with these benches? I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen the benches. I don't know what's proposed for the benches. There's nothing been shown to the public. I'm assuming some of you have seen the benches. I haven't seen them. I'd like to see what we're talking. My concern also is that advertising will end up in front of businesses that are in competition. That's happened before. It's happened on our billboards. Also concerned that some of the entities that might be bidding for these have done things, asked for forgiveness, and instead of being held accountable, then they sue. And I think we have a Civic Center sign that one of the uh, entities that does billboard, he went after us and changed the, the code because we put signs up. We put that Civic Center sign. Now we're going to put benches and we're going to throw those all over. Will that allow him to put signs wherever he wants? And if he doesn't get his way, does he sue us? Question you might ask. I don't know. Which leads me back to, are we ready for this? Does this fit into our master plan? Are our codes up to date to fit into our comprehensive plan? We spent a lot of money on a comprehensive plan, and it feels like we're not even looking at it to get to the end goal. I would challenge, if you haven't read the comprehensive plan, I happen to be on planning and zoning. I spend a lot of time on that. I've seen that pl comprehensive plan. We're getting away from it. Challenge you to really look at it and visit that. I am a businessman. I do not, I do want to be able to advertise my business, but how do we do it? Thank you for your time. Please consider this. I appreciate all you do. Thank you. Pat Roseland on the same, idea, uh, same item. Thank you, Council and Mayor. Uh, my name is Pat Roseland, 1318 West Boulevard. Uh, I cannot find myself up here. I was up here years ago with the billboard uh, situation. Uh, a few years ago, one of the realtors here in town placed his photo on a bench in front of the old St. John's Hospital. I'm not sure how he did it, why he did it, but he felt like he did it. 
And after two days of numerous phone calls, he took it down because it's in a historic district and did not belong there. I'm not sure if it's legal with, uh, with our ordinance here in Rapid City, but it was not uh, uh, applicable to an historic district. Uh, we've seen over the, over the last few years the, the proliferation of billboards in Rapid City and around Rapid City, which I think is a, a, a abomination of, of our beauty, beauty in the Black Hills and Rapid City. And uh, again, I wish that uh, you would open your eyes and uh, really look at what you're doing here. Like you said, there's probably 75 more billboards in Rapid City, different sizes. And, uh, what, and what will this start? Because it seems like every time something small happens, it grows to a big, big fiasco because everybody wants a part of it. And uh, so I really request that you open your eyes. And it's going to be pretty easy, I think. If you really look at yourself, just say no. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then on item 33, we have Ted Pettyjohn. Good evening. I'm Ted Pettyjohn. I'm one of the partners in Prairie Acres LLC. Um, I just want to communicate to the entire council that Prairie Acres is committed to pursuing annexation of the park in question and we're committed to compliance with mobile home park ordinances. Um, we've invested a lot of money in the upgrade of Prairie Acres mobile home parks. We paid the city $235,000 in connection fees for connection to sewer on the Seeger Drive project. We paid a local contractor an additional $813,000 for internal upgrades to sewer and streets in those parks. And it's just the beginning of the um, expense that we've incurred in upgrading the mobile home parks. Um, I guess I disagree with the assertion that little progress has been made towards compliance in the parks. A lot has happened recently. And I feel that we're actually fairly close to compliance with the ordinances. Um, one of the problems is that we don't own the homes in the park and most of the problems that we've experienced are conditions of the homes that the tenants own. You know, chipped and, cre you know, chipped and peeling paint, uh, skirting that doesn't comply with the ordinances, etc. cetera. Um, many of our residents are among the most disadvantaged residents in Rapid City and compliance with these ordinances been a significant financial burden on them. Prairie Acres has helped with free labor, material, assistance, and guidance in getting them up to speed. Um, I hope that you don't impose a 300% increase on the sewer fees for the park because the tenants pay those and I would have to pass that along to them and that would be a significant financial hardship for them. So please um, um, I guess I want to tell you that we will comply and things have changed for several reasons. One, um, my personal involvement in the project. I'm typically not involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the parks. I'm an owner. This is, requires a bit of attention. My personal involvement will be going from here forward. Um, winter is over. It's much easier for us to make progress. Um, we are undertaking the projects that need to be done and just with the hopes that the tenants can pay us back someday. And, uh, you know, we're making those upgrades at our cost. So please, I guess, um, I'd like to see us pursue annexation and you have my assurance that we'll be able to comply with the ordinances. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll close public comment on these items now and we'll start under ordinances with item 28. First reading of Ordinance 6247 and Ordinance Amending Sections of the Rapid City Municipal Code Relating to Nuisances. Approve. Motion to approve by Drew and a second by Nordstrom. Uh, all in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. 
Item 29, first reading ordinance 6244 and ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by KTM Design Solutions for Yasmin Dream LLC for a rezoning from general agricultural district to low density residential for property generally described as being located west of Elderberry Boulevard. To Motion to approve by Solomon and second by Drury. Uh, all in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 30, first reading ordinance 6245, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by KTM Design Solutions for Yasmin Dream LLC for a rezoning from general agricultural district to low density residential district two for property uh, generally located as being uh, described as being located west of the intersection of Elderberry Boulevard and Jim Street. Motion to approve by Drew and a second by Modric. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Item 31, first reading ordinance 6246, an ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by KTM Design Solutions for Yasmin Dream LLC for rezoning from general agricultural district to medium density residential district for property generally described as being located west of the northern end of Elderberry Boulevard. Motion to approve by Drury and a second by Nordstrom. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Now on to public works items, we'll go to public works chair Darla Drew. Thank you, Mayor. Item 32, authorize staff to advertise for bids for bus passenger bench and bus passenger bench advertising. And um, the recommendation was to approve with a four to one vote from Public Works. I didn't, I didn't make a motion. You want a motion? No. Yield. 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 Okay. Okay, we'll go to Lisa Modric. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm in queue so that I could begin the speaking portion of this because I think it's important for all of our council to understand and realize, and if you had a chance to stream it, if you weren't at Committee at Public Works, the historic value that our department had brought forward on how this had started many decades ago, and it was before councils over and over and over again that uh, our city was becoming less beautiful and it was becoming more deterrent in the way we were uh, allowing business to happen uh, in an advertising uh, way. Now, advertising is non-tax, so the city doesn't make a tax on that. Uh, it's, it's free tax, you know, this is not a city thing. It's, it's a, a law of the land. And so there isn't a contribution. The only contribution that could be made is in this, what is before us today, but that doesn't mean that it's actually a revenue generator. And uh, Rich, our department uh, director, had an opportunity to say to us that this wasn't a reason for revenue, and it's on the recording. And so when you re-review that recording again, he says the purpose isn't for revenue. The purpose is because we want to get out of the, the bench business. And um, I think this is the wrong reason to get out of the bench business. We're in the transportation business as a city. It's, it's our uh, responsibility to place transportation where people who need it can go to it. And then the benches become a very important and valuable part of where those stops are. It may be assisting an elderly. It may be assisting an ADA. Um, it may be assisting a child that's running the bus, uh, riding the bus. So it's part of what our transportation program is. It shouldn't be considered a sideline, and we just don't want to do it anymore. Why there isn't advertising on them now when historically you go back and the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and all the city councils that have been battling over this, it's because the cities, the communities that really care about their communities, they're changing the way they're looking. They're changing the way they uh, want their community to feel. They're making it livable. They're making it beautiful. They're making it so that as we elevate Rapid City with the programs that we have that are aggressive in the next five years, people will come here and they want to be here. They want to see the beauty. We're the Paha Sapa. We're at the foothills of the Black Hills. We should always consider and protect that every single day that we are here. Many of us came here from other places where it got out of control. And we're here because we want to cherish that and protect it. 
the community did speak on the same issue when they voted 66 percent. What they were voting for is for safety and beautification and an acceptance of making sure we were taking care of our city along the way. And it really got out of control. So a smart council and mayor a decade or two ago, after having this come before them for so many years, said, well, let's clean it up. Let's make these benches earth tone because they weren't being taken care of. Eventually, there's not enough money here, even in the RFP, there's not enough money to really manage and maintain. And so it came back to the council. They made these beautiful earth tone benches. I drove around all day today searching out the businesses, and, uh, the benches, and it was really quite pleasant. A lot of them are in places where it, it accented the area. It made it look nice. Now picture it with uh, any kind of color that's going to be sitting on there. And uh, a, a phone number as you're driving by, is this the way we're driving? Is this a safe way of driving? Is this good for our community? When right now we're working towards, you know, stay eyes on the road and stay protected and keep your community clean. The comprehensive plan was mentioned. I've read it. It's on the cover page of the city, rcgov.org. It's sitting right there. And when you begin to talk about what is in that book, it's telling us do the right thing. This is going backwards in time. This is reversing out those leaders of which we should still be respecting who made those tough decisions and made the commitment for it. And then also in our de uh, department head, he had mentioned in the history that there was some grants and some things that were available to get this program going so that it could clean up our community and perhaps those grants are still there. And wouldn't that be great to have that? I would hope that we would get more of that information. Somebody else uh, publicly on Facebook had mentioned, have we talked about adopting a road, adopting a street, something else to offset it that can make it beautiful. Let's adopt it if there's a problem with uh, cleaning around it. So I think there's lots of options. I don't think we've looked at them all. And I think that this is the wrong one. I believe and I hope that we see a motion come through that this should not take place. We should not authorize for bid, but we should deny bid. It's not going to do anything for anybody. And in a few years from now, this council and mayor or others be in behind and um, forward us will be reversing it back out. And what is the cost going to be at that time? Thank you, Mayor. Ed Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. And keep the floor if I could, please. Okay, motion by uh, Lewis to approve and second by John Roberts. Okay, go ahead. And if Mr. Dale Tech, if I make a mistake, feel free to jump in and correct me. I'm going to go through a little, little bit of history here. I know this was, they took away the, the advertising off the benches about 2006, roughly. And is that correct? That is my understanding okay, of and the then, time frame, yes. And then part of the deal with the, uh, the whole replacement of the benches came about 2008. That was due to one-time money from the Obama administration's uh, infrastructure um, inf infusion they did at the time? That's correct. Okay, so basically that was one-time money that's no longer available at this point. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so that was answering that question about where the money came from to replace the benches originally. Um, also, this, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about this is only $36,000. Well, we sit here and argue for two or three hours about $10,000 or $20,000 all the time. You know, revenue is revenue, folks. And up till recently, this was the way it was up here all the time. I benches. I mean, every bench, every city I go to, I see advertising on the benches. I don't really think twice about it, to be completely honest with you. I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble with my voice. So, like I said, it's Christmas in April for some people. But, uh, also, we talk about um, some of this money. This uh, what's been used partially, as I understand it, from talking to Rich Sagan, um, to offset what, I, in my opinion, is probably one of the best uh, one of the best uh, programs we have going in the city, which is the free rapid ride for the students, and that's not paid for. This doesn't cover that, but it helps re replenish that at least a little bit. It doesn't cover it completely, but is that correct, too, Mr. Tech? That's correct, but that's really not the intent of. No, it does. This. But it's I mean, just but, an additional revenue stream. But it does help supplement that at some point. It certainly helps offset, yeah, offset the excuse operational me, offset, costs yeah, of revenue. Operational costs, excuse me. And then we talk about, like, you know, the, the revenue. We're also talking about the fact that the people that own these benches are going to be taking care of them, so the city doesn't have to do that anymore. Then there would be about, what, between fifty dollars and $75,000 to replace the benches as they stand. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so that's money we'd have to come up with out of our pockets to do that. Plus, we're not going to have to maintain them anymore, and they're going to have to maintain the areas around the benches. So, to me, we're making a lot more than $36,000 a year. And we're able to keep helping, help keeping that uh, rapid ride um, program going for the kids, you know, getting to school, which 
I applaud the mayor for doing something. It was really important to our city. And I, I really, I think it's a great program. And so, you know, if you can think about it in that, that, that context, folks, I think it's a small price to pay to make sure our kids get to school on time and, and have a chance to get there. And it may be not be the exact reason for doing this, but it sure doesn't hurt it. And if it offsets those bills, I really appreciate that. So I, I think it's a great program. I don't pay that much attention. I do take a little umbrage with the fact that they say that realtors are the ones advertising on it. Well, <laughs> it's part of being a realtor. You've got to get your name out there. But anyway, uh, I yield. Laura Armstrong. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question for Dale Tech. Just to clarify on this, this regardless of how this vote goes, um, this is just to get bids, correct? So correct. The item in front advertising of wouldn't just start blowing up. Things wouldn't be removed. Mm -hmm. We're just simply this vote has to do with getting bids. That is correct. And then we it would have to come back to council. Yes. And then we could potentially make some modifications. We'd have more clarity of what we were voting on, um, the colors of the the bus stops and what I would believe be a all part that, of that will be will be part of the RFP or request for proposals that we'll send out. We'll be very specific about what the guidelines are, but certainly the item will come back before the council for approval. Okay, because I do think that uh, these people that showed up today and spoke, they do have valid concerns and they do have valid points, but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves, and I think it's important just to have the details before we think that far ahead. Okay. All right, thank yes. you. I yield. Jason Solomon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May I direct a question to our city attorney, please? Yes, please. Sorry to surprise you, Mr. Landine. Um, I, one of the comments I heard in general comment, and I, it kind of was interesting, was <clears throat> would these benches at all be misconstrued as billboards in our pending litigation? Uh, is advertisement at a small scale on a bus bench uh, equitable to advertising on a billboard or not? The fact sign credits, that whole, that whole thing. No, I mean, there's a separate exception for bus benches. It's not classified as an off-premise sign, although technically I can see why it would be considered that, but it's not. I don't think it would open up, um, I don't think it would open up any more than, than what we have now as far as uh, off-premise advertising. I mean, we already, look, there's already things people can do separate from what we do, like wrapping their cars in advertising and then parking them in front of their business. I mean, at some point you have to decide how, how far you want to regulate it. So if somebody painted an advertisement on a bench in front of their building, is that, if it's for their business, I mean, I wouldn't get too worried about it. It's not like it's unusual for cities to have advertising on buses or bus benches. Mm -hmm. and I don't think it opens it up. And frankly, uh, the public purpose exception, um, that didn't open it up. The only reason it opened it up is because the council at that time uh, agreed with Mr. Casey's attorney, Mr. Casey and his attorney, and said, yep, they're public purpose signs. If they had said no, we wouldn't have those four public purpose billboards, is my opinion. So um, I don't think that allowing bus benches or uh, advertising on city bus benches is going to open up Pandora's box. Okay. Thank you. I yield. Becky Drury. Thank you, Mayor. May I ask Del Tech a question, please, or two? Yes. Mr. Tech, um, when I was going back through the minutes, they said there was going to be additional information coming forward, and I didn't see any additional the, information? The intention was the additional information is going to come back to the council if this is approved tonight. This is just an authorization to get started. We don't have the uh, RFP package written. We don't have any of the guidelines written. We want to know if the city council supports this and for us to move forward. Uh, Rich Sagan, our transit division manager, made commitments that the advertising is going to be family friendly. It won't be allowed to advertise out in front of a competing business and all that type of thing. So those guidelines will be written as part of the uh, proposal process. And is it $36,000 a year or $36,000 over three years? It's an estimated $36,000 over three years, so roughly $12,000 a year. $12,000 a year, which... is a kick in the can. Thank you, Mr. You're Tech. Welcome. I yield. Darla Drew. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, Dale, I, I guess I'll ask you these questions because Mr. Sagan's not here. Because um, I had some unanswered questions the other day. And now when I look at these ad costs or estimated ad costs, they seem really low to me as a person that knows about advertising. Uh, was an ad agency ever um, consulted on what the cost should be for selling these um, bus advertising? Once again, the city is just receiving a portion of it. So it's a, it's not the oh. entirety. We're, they're having to do the, all the work for installing new benches, selling the advertising, placing the advertising, all the operation and maintenance of the benches. We are just receiving a portion of the revenue that they're receiving. Okay, because I thought at 12,000 a year, it's selling that resource pretty cheaply. Um, also, I asked um, Mr. Sagan if he had kind of uh, some kind of verbiage to, um, address the maintenance of the ads what, when they got faded, tired, whatever, if they're out there for two years. And there seemed to be no answer to that question from him. He said they didn't really address that. He had indicated that there would be standards as part of the contract that if it doesn't look good, we have the ability to tell them to replace it. Okay, okay, I get that. Um, well, I have thought about this a lot. And my constituents from Ward 5 have helped me make a decision that I, would, I will vote against this. Um, I've heard them, and um, I will vote no. I'm not anti-ads, but I think that I can be, in this particular case, um, anti-proliferation of ads. If there were to be anything on these bus benches, it would be wonderful if there could be artwork or something like that, you know, like we've done to the city power boxes. That I could get behind, but um, I'm afraid, uh, you know, even if we advertise city programs, I wouldn't have a problem with that. You know, we have a lot of nice city programs you do not, down at the rec center and, and camps and things for kids. But at this point, just opening it up to ads, uh, I'm just not in favor of it. Thank you. I yield. Amanda Scott. Thank you, Mayor. May I ask a couple follow-up questions of Mr. Dale Tech, please? Yes, please. Thank you. So, Dale, I did stream the discussion that was held during public works on this item. Did I hear correctly that the discussion um, that Rich brought up, that, that 36000 was just an estimate, because until this goes out to bid, they really don't know? So, so in, in perfect frankness, it could be lower but it could also be higher. That's correct. Rich told me that he had estimated it on the way low end, he thought. So, but yes, certainly it could come in anywhere. And so one of the other questions I have is that uh, since this was being um, presented to the city council and the amount of revenue is 12000 per year and coming up to 36000 nowhere in here do I see that the RFP is going to go out for three years, but with that dollar amount in there and the specification for that, is this really looking at really an RFP for three years so it would be a trial-like period and w if we can review it again before we send it out to RFPs again after three years? Correct, yes. The, <clears throat> with this type of a project, three years is more lucrative to potential um, bidders on the project, if you will. A one-year term doesn't make a lot of financial sense to them to replace all the benches just for a one-year shot at it. So a three-year <clears throat> term is an appropriate starting place, we believe, and that will at attract uh, uh, hopefully a number of bidders to the project. So if the city council tonight were to go ahead and direct staff that we're in favor of at least seeing what this RFP would look like or um, the, the requirements of setting out an RFP to see if any advertising companies would even bite at it based on the guidelines and the restrictions and the uh, requirements that they have to do in order to pick up this contract of these 75 benches. Because I also do want to clarify, these 75 benches are the ones that do not have any building around them, correct? Correct. They're in areas that advertisement would be um, appropriate, arterial type roadways, not in residential areas. So, uh, Because one of the questions I had is when, we're, when you're going out for this RFP on this one, it's just the bench itself. So if there is a structure around it, a protective structure around the bus stop a bench, no advertising can go on the structure. That's correct, on the bench only. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess I can support sending this out for an RFQ because it is a short 
time for it period because then we have a sunset clause. And I th do think I agree with um, Alderwoman Armstrong that the city council gets to look at this again when the bids come in so we can even see if any advertising companies are even interested um, based on the guidelines of no competing advertising in front of businesses, that replacement of the uh, uh, benches, keeping the area clean, the maintenance, because I, I'm telling you, I, I think that's going to be an awful lot of work. So Alderwoman Drew indicated that advertising is very lucrative. I'm wondering if this is going to be lucrative enough to have anybody bite at it. So I, <laughs> I, I, I can see this going forward just to see if it's, uh, if it's possible. Thank you. Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. I've been vacillating on this one here. I haven't figured out how to vote on this. Uh, originally, I came in with the idea of, of uh, supporting the concept. Um, so uh, it sounds like there's enough votes to, to pass it. So I'm going to come at this from a wholly different angle on this. I would like to see us do this in-house rather than contracting it out. So just for future reference, when we did a chance to take a look at this uh, uh, bids as it comes in, I'd rather see the staff doing the, the uh, advertising because uh, using the uh, Civic Center and the airport as an example, they're already doing it in-house. Why can't the Transportation Department do it as well? So that's the other reason that I'm looking at it from a different angle. So, um, And then there's a whole host of other issues that, uh, along with advertising as well. But I'd like to have the, uh, the city staff to take a look at it as well. So it isn't just the uh, uh, agencies that are out there in the public. Thank you. I'll yield. Okay, the motion on the floor is to approve authorizing staff to advertise for bids for the bus passenger bench and bus uh, bench advertising. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion passes with three no's. I'm sorry, four no's. Okay, next item, please, Darla. Sorry, I was just grieving. Okay, let's see here. Um, item 32A. Request funding to construct an approximately 1,400 foot collector street to provide access to a proposed 175 acre residential subdivision located south of Catherine Boulevard and east of Wellington Drive, estimated cost $1,500,000. This item was continued from March 19th and the recommendation here is to continue till May 7th, 2018. Second. Motion to continue by Richie Nordstrom, second by Chad Lewis. Uh, all in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item under community development, please, Darla. Item 33, request for direction from the City Council regarding resolution 2018-023, the annexation of Prairie Acres LLC Mobile Home Park. And a move to approve. Sorry, that was, a, that was a motion for approval by Drew and a second by Laurenti? Okay, uh, we'll go to Amanda Scott. Thank you, Mayor. And may I ask the motion maker, your, your motion is to approve pursuing annexation at this time? I will go with the recommendation. My, I would, I, so I will amend my... Um, my motion, pursue annexation w and require compliance within 120 days after annexation. So that'd be my motion. Is that okay with the seconder? Okay. So then, Mayor, I'd like to make a friendly amendment to that motion if the motion maker and the seconder are in agreement with that to pursue the annexation in six months and then require the compliance within 120 days. And if I can get a second or the agreement of that friendly amendment, I'd like to retain the floor and explain. Okay, so the friendly amendment proposes beginning annexation process six months from now and then giving an additional 120 days for compliance. I'll uh, have to hear okay logic on, on that before I can say yes. 
Okay, so let's, uh, let's take the friendly amendment thing off, and uh, would you like to make a substitute motion? I'll make a substitute motion. Okay. Of the saying the same. Of the same. Okay. Uh, substitute motion is on the floor now with uh, starting in six months and then 120 days compliance after that. Is there a second? For discussion? Okay, motion fails. Uh, if I can retain the, the floor. You still got time. Go thank ahead. you, thank you, Mayor. So um, the main reason, the only reason I was saying that is I did stream this topic of conversation at the public works meeting as well, and it seems like there's good faith in working towards this annexation. And from what I understood from listening to the conversation, a voluntary, voluntary annexation is most likely not going to happen because of the. Um, population within the park that actually are the voters and you can't get the uh, required number to actually sign on and get this done. So this is going to be require a forced annexation pursued by the city. But it sounded like there was good faith um, preparation or trying to bring into compliance. And so I know the numbers that were thrown out was 90 days, 120 days, and so all I was looking at is that if we were going to go ahead and give them an opportunity to come into compliance, I would, I would have made the, the recommendation that we wouldn't charge the 300% upcharge, give them additional time to work towards that annexation so that we give them a win-win. I'm trying, I was trying with my motion to not set them up for failure because if they cannot make it in 120 days and this motion goes through as is, it seems to me they will automatically get a 300% increase on their water bill. So I was just trying to set it up so they had a win-win, had plenty of time at least this year in the nice weather. We may still end up with a snowstorm in June. You never know, <laughs> but hopefully not. But give them enough time to bring everything into compliance. But it failed, so I would just caution the rest of the council members to please consider that because I really do not like setting businesses up to fail when they are really trying to do the right thing. Thank you. Lisa Modric. Thank you, Mayor. As you saw in the streaming, there was a lot of information that came out. It really made for a positive recommendation by committee, and that was to pursue the annexation. This annexation process has been taking place now for a couple of years, and uh, Mr. Pettyjohn and the park itself has been working hard to get to where they are. He mentioned the numbers, $235,000 to the city plus $118,000. Uh, $1,000 as well for infrastructure connection. So he's got over a million dollars he's invested. And, uh, you know, that should be commended because that should allow this annexation to happen. Uh, we're providing the 120-day compliance in the original motion because it is summertime, as Mr. Pettyjohn said. It is the time where he can really get a lot more done, and he's got it on his list, and the commitment was made. He even had mentioned at committee that it was less than this, but we were giving him some more room because we really think he can get it done by the, uh, by the time that the fall comes. And then there was a, also a lot of discussion in the fact that what this does, it doesn't create the 300% because he would be annexed. So that allows him to operate without that increased cost without an all of a sudden hit. But one of the things that uh, it does do is it gives him the leverage that he needs to uh, get his park in order, get his houses in order, and get his, his customers who are our residents of our community uh, to assist on the hardship. And the hardship, he made a, stadium, uh, a podium statement that was awesome. He said, I'm willing basically to uh, maybe assess them later for the work I'm going to do today. That's, that's a strong and true commitment. So is this worth waiting after we've already been working on it for years, or is this the time to annex it, pull the trigger? He's got uh, permitting. He's got to get a permit, so he's got to clear this in order to have his business permit on it. So there's tons of uh, reasons why he is motivated to finally have, uh, have the job done, and it's our job to allow that to happen. It really is. This is the time for us to say, yes, we, uh, we, we want you as part of our city. There's already a big chunk of it that's already lined in it. So this is this other swing. It brings it over uh, around. Also in committee, it was mentioned how many parks are in compliance. Well, it's a challenge because it is our lower income. And we all know 
that we're working off of the need for our lower income housing and that's important and we can't lose that. So it's just as important to bring the lower income housing into our community and into our borders as it is to um, state, well, we're going to give you another uh, six months and then another 120 days. I think we'll still be talking about this in 2020. So <laughs> thank you, Mr. Pettyjohn, for your commitment, and thank you for letting me share what we learned from committee in appreciation. Okay, Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. If I may make a motion to uh, approve uh, 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 option B, which is to delay annexation until the owner demonstrates that it can obtain the license to operate, amend the agreement to remove the 300% billing upcharge. Option B. So you're asking for a substitute motion. Substitute motion. To deny annexation until the owner can demonstrate the ability to obtain a license? Yes. And, and remove going. the 300% uh, upcharge. <clears throat> and option B says it pretty plainly, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and we have a second by Jason Solomon. Say that one more time. Yeah, sure. Option B says that uh, delay annexation until owner dem demonstrates that it can obtain a license to operate amend the agreement to remove the 300% billing upcharge. Okay, we have a second. And if I can retain the floor. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, essentially, there, there's been a lot of discussion on time frames. Um, if if uh, the owner can get it done before 120 days, let him, allow him to do that. Um, I, I drove through that lot up there I see what he's talking about, what the owner is talking about, Mr. Pettyjohn, is talking about the issues that he has to contend with. I don't want to inherit a problem and then by annexation and then we have to start dealing with it through code enforcement. Let the owner deal with the, the issues r rather than code enforcement, the city code enforcement staff having to do it. Um, this gives him an opportunity to get all of his uh, affairs in order so that he can bring it forward to um, in, in, in his time frame rather than us setting deadlines on it. Um, yes, granted that uh, we don't have to do it within 20, 120 days, but uh, I'd rather have him set deadlines on himself rather than us setting up the deadlines. That's where I'm coming from. Thank you, Mayor. I'll yield. Okay, Becky Drury. Thank you, ma'am. Mayor, may I ask Ken Young a question, please? Yes. <laughs> Ken, I know you had weighed in on this um, with some of the material you had presented. Could you tell us why you were against this annexation? Well, the point has been made uh, that we would inherit a problem that would have to be dealt with through code enforcement. Uh, code enforcement is busy enough, and we've got a lot of goals and issues that we're trying to deal with. To add to that stack, uh, I don't think is a, a fair uh, way to approach this right now. The, the, it, it, it appears that there's plenty of motivation on behalf of the property owner to come into compliance. Let him do that. Then we don't have an issue. We can annex. So you like this um, motion we have now? Where I think it's, it's a good one. Okay. Uh, Mayor, may I ask Del Tug a question? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tech, you kind of had the flip side of Mr. Young's reasoning. Could you share that with us? No, I, I share Ken's uh, view on this. The, the issue that Public Works has certainly is the utility rate. Um, we're good with not charging them 300% until they come into compliance and get annexed, but if this drags on for years and years and years and there's no motivation for them to annex, I don't want to just arbitrarily amend the agreement today to take that off the table. So that's my concern with it, with the uh, water rates or the utility rates. Right, because they did already have an agreement from Correct. 2015 and with the city and then the city already per went out and established the water for them because <coughs> of quality sure, and safety right. issues and things like that. Okay. Um, 
that helps me. Thank you very much. Jason Solomon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> kind of clarify my my seconding of the motion first of all I just want to commend mr. Petty John for all the work that he's done and his willingness I uh, we don't always have that kind of cooperation and and from the discussion we had at committee level and here tonight I do appreciate that um, that's why we're willing to hold off that 300% that's only fair uh, to the residents out there uh, we would love for you to become a part of the city I, I think I share uh, Richie's concern as well as apparently the staff members that to take care of this before it's annexed versus after because it's it's, it's about who kind of enforces it and you kind of have a, a reason to kind of hey let's get this done and we can keep your sewer rates down and I don't have to raise prices maybe that's a motivating factor I don't know but I, I think it's uh, commendable all the work that you've done and I do appreciate that um, and it is noticeable from us up here I that that much is true uh, however I think it's just it's reasonable for us to ask that uh, prior to annexation that you that you reasonably take care of these issues we know not every single issue will be taken care of either but there's a reasonableness and that's why there's a mobile home licensing that's done um, those are given to all mobile homes that uh, operate and so they have to have some form of compliance and maybe it won't bat a thousand I don't know but it hopefully will be close enough to where it's safe and clean and um, a good place to live because everybody deserves a decent place to live whether it's in a mobile home park or not as one who's lived in them many times as a kid so um, so that's why I support this motion uh, on the floor uh, it is with the same uh, concern that we think we all have I think we all are kind of getting to the same place it's just kind of about whether it's done before or after annexation I think that's really the question on the table is do you want to bring this in and then deal with it or do we want to deal with it and then bring it in so which order do you want to go in? I think that's the question for us to debate tonight. And I will yield. Thank you. John Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, my mic wasn't working. <laughs> Mr. Petty, John, I want to thank you very much for all the work you've done out there. I was out looking at some commercial property on Friday on Seeger, and I ran through your court. And I was extremely impressed by your roads. It had been a few years since I'd been out there, and you did a wonderful job on the roads, redoing all of them through the park. So, you know, a million dollars is a lot of money in a trailer court. Um, there's not <laughs> a lot of money to be made in them when you buy one that you have to put a lot of money into up front. So I do commend you on that. And I do know how difficult it is to bring these into compliance. And I have to commend you for putting your own money into it, helping these people get some of these problems fixed, hoping you'll get it back because you probably won't get most of it back. And I think you probably understand that. But I can't support B, and I'll tell you why. It's not because of anything that I think Mr. Pettyjohn may or may not do. But I think if we do that, we'd be setting bad precedent on anything else that may come in. Because if, if we just delay the annexation and remove the 300% on the wrong person, they're never going to come into compliance, ever. So, you know, we've got some awful trailer courts in Rapid City. We've got one off of Haynes Avenue that I know our fire chief has dealt with for years and years and years. And I got a question. Does anybody know, is that in compliance? Here's our fire chief. All the uh, parks that are in the city have an inspection done on them. They have to have that, that inspection um, before they can get licensed. And all of the parks, to my knowledge, are licensed in the city. Have you been through the tra tra uh, trailer court in question? I haven't recently. I have in the past, though. Okay. How long has it been since you've been through it? Do you know? A couple years? Two years seems like five years, which is usually well, 10 years. Well, I know. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, you know, but I, I've been through his last Friday. I've been through the other one that I was talking about here just a couple of days ago because I had a home that bordered it that took me over a year to sell because it bordered it. So, you know, I know the difference between the two. And if that one's got a license, his is nothing compared to that one. So that makes me wonder, you know, what are the recommendations to get a license and why is he falling out of it at this time because he's put a lot of work into there and his court is <coughs> 10 times better than the court I'm talking about that's licensed so anyway I think we need to move forward on this I think we should license it I think that 
he's going to be a good owner. He already is good owner operator. I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. It may take him a while to come into compliance, but as long as he's spending this kind of money up front, I don't see him stopping it. And I think he wants to have something that he can be even more proud of. So thank you. Amanda Scott. Thank you, Mayor. If I understand the current motion that's before the City Council is there is no time limit on this. And so even though uh, Mr. Pettyjohn is working on getting compliance and everything else, without a time frame on this, I can't support this because we're removing any incentive. We're removing the 300 percent markup on this and we're not giving him a time frame. I'm for removing the 300 percent markup to give him the time for compliance, which is why I made my motion of giving six months and then start the annexation process, which would give him more time and then we could deal with it. I thought it was a fair compromise of, of you know, removing the 300 percent, giving some time extended time on it to make sure there's plenty of time in the summer months to get this done, but then having a time frame. Um, I can't support what's currently here because there's no time frame. We could go 10, 20, 30 years before we're looking at annexing this. So I can't support the current motion without a time frame. Thank you. Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to comment on a couple of uh, uh, suggestions that have been made this earlier on this. Uh, there's a trailer court up on Haynes Avenue. Just keep in mind that's an absentee owner, whereas Mr. Perijan is here in the city. In fact, he owns property adjacent to this property that's going to be uh, annexed in. So if somebody wants to make a friendly amendment to, and I'll take it as a friendly amendment to put a, put a date time frame of how many days you want it uh, on on um, option B, if you want to put 120 days in there, I, I'll take that as a friendly amendment. But uh, I just don't want to inherit a problem first, and then then we have to go through <coughs> the code enforcement. Thank you, Mayor. I'll yield. Okay. Back to John Roberts. Yes, I'm going to call the question. Okay. Any objection to calling the question? Okay, the clarification on the motion is, the motion is to deny uh, pursuing annexation until the owner can dis, uh, demonstrate he can license the property uh, and to not pursue or to remove the 300% upcharge, correct? Delay for no certain time the upcharge, correct? Everyone understand the motion? Yes. Everyone understand the motion? Okay, all in favor of that motion, uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, motion fails. Uh, good day, sir. Eight to two, and that was Richie, Richie and, and Solomon. Okay. Hold on one sec. Uh, I have a question for the city attorney. Do you, have, do you have the feeling that this rolls back to the original motion or do we need a new motion? What would your opinion be? This was a substitute motion? would go back to the original motion. Okay, so the original motion then being back on the floor and that is to uh, pursue annexation and require compliance 120 days after annexation. Okay, and anyone who hasn't already spoken twice? Okay, that is the motion on the floor. Uh, let's vote on it. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, roll call please. Solomon, Lewis, Aye. Armstrong, Aye. Laurenti, Aye. Drury, 
Roberts. Aye. Scott. No. Drew. Aye. Nordstrom. No. Modric. Yes. Motion passes six to four. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next item, please, Darla. Thank you. Item 34, request by KTM Design Solutions, Inc. for Alan Dietrich, Living Trust, Dean Ham Trust for a pre preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lot A, 1AR of Block 19, Red Rock Estates, generally described as being located northwest of the intersection of Ainsdale Court and Port Rush Road. Um, recommendation approved with stipulations, and I make a motion to approve. Second. Second by Nick, uh, Richie Nordstrom. Uh, all in favor of approval, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. Motion carries. Item 35, request by KTM Design Solutions, Inc. for Crossing Land Company, LLC, for a preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lots 3, 4, and 5 of Track B of Rushmore Center, generally described as being located northwest of the intersection of East Anamonosa Street and Luna Avenue. The recommendation is to approve with stipulation. Move to approve. Second by... Roberts, all in favor of approval, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. 36, a request by KTM Design Solutions, Inc. for Yasmin Dream, LLC, for a preliminary subdivision plan for proposed lots 15 through 25 of Block 1, lots 15 through 56 of Block 2, lot C, D, E, and F of Wetland and Drainage Tract A of Johnson Ranch Subdivision, generally described as being located southwest of the intersection of St. Patrick Street and East Highway 44. Recommendation is to approve with stipulations. Move to approve. Second. Okay, second by Chad Lewis. All in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. That takes us through those items. And uh, we have no speaker requests on uh, 37 or 38. So we'll go right to item 37, and that is Crisbro Incorporated doing business as Microtel Inn and Suites, 1740 Rap Street for package, off sale malt beverage, and uh, South Dakota Farm wine license. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Drew, second by Roberts. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the non consent public hearing items, items 38, second reading, ordinance 6242, and ordinance amending section 17.06 of chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, a request by KTM Design Solutions for Black Hills Capital LLC for rezoning from general agricultural district to low density residential district 2. For property generally described as being located east of North Valley Drive at the western terminus of Homestead Street. Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Solomon, second by Modric. Uh, all in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 39, the bill list, and we'll go to Finance Officer Pauline Sumption. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are no additions to the bill list, that which is attached, so the total remains at $6,454,580.85. Motion to approve by Laurenti, second by Drury. All in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Solomon, second by Armstrong. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, everyone. We're adjourned.